Look guys, honestly, your outreach sucks. I'm seeing my students in one-to-one -one programs coming into one-to-one -one program and they're showing me their outreach systems and honestly, it absolutely sucks. So I'm just gonna reveal the secrets as to how you can go about genuinely succeeding with SMA when it comes to doing outreach. This is not only gonna be applicable to SMA, this is also gonna be applicable if you have a coaching business, consulting business, whatever type of business. As long as you're doing cold outreach in order to set a call, to then close on that particular call, then this video is for you. So all I ask for in return is for you to drop a like, comment, subscribe, turn the notification bell. And again, I'm doing this all for free for you guys because I'm literally sick and tired of seeing you guys' outreach and it completely just sucks. So first and foremost, guys, we're on my board right now. I'm just gonna jump straight into this. First of all, I made a video not too recently about kind of like how to master outreach in 2023. So I do recommend you go back and watch that first and then come back and watch this. Open it up in the, in the new tab. It's on my channel, it's completely free. So first and foremost, I see a couple of reasons continuously popping up as to why your guys' outreach sucks. So I'm not gonna go over these too much because I've already covered them. But realistically, whenever I see someone's outreach, number one, you've got no differentiation. You're just doing the same shit as everybody else. You're just doing Facebook ads to a niche. You found a niche, you found Facebook ads, and then you're just trying to like throw that together. That never really works, guys, and here's why. Well, it can actually work, but it doesn't really work. Here's, here's the reason why. You don't actually understand, right? why the person needs Facebook ads because you've not done any first-hand research. You've just went online, you've started Googling how to start an SMA, you've come across all these gurus and blah, 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 blah. They've mentioned Facebook ads, so you're like, okay, I'm gonna offer Facebook ads because I, make, I can make a lot of money from that. Here's the, here's the key, it's not about you. Unfortunately, it's not about you. It's what's in it for the actual business owner. What's the outcome? You need to start selling people on the outcome. People don't actually want Facebook ads. If you said to me and you're gonna pitch me on Facebook ads, even the word Facebook, ads, the phrase Facebook ads, don't use the, the, the phrase Facebook ads or TikTok ads or SEO, help them get the outcome. The outcome would be maybe generating um, new customers on autopilot. Don't even say you're gonna do paid ads. Anything to do with ads, forget it in your outreach. Number two, you've got a weak offer because you're just doing the same as everybody else. So you're just coming up with the same offers over and over and over again. Even if you offer the big G, which is guarantee, you guys are sounding the exact same because you're in the same niche and you're offering the same, the same offer. If you're going to do this, guys, let's say you're lazy and you don't want to differentiate yourself because you just want to offer Facebook ads for some reason, whatever it is, and you've got a weak offer and you're in the same niche with, with, that, with, with the same offers every Tom, Dick and Harry, which is like Facebook ads for e-commerce brands, then the only way I've genuinely found you can compete with, with, with people like this is if you do literally mass marketing, you either run your own Facebook ads for your own agency or you create a personal brand around the thing that you're, that you're selling. Think about it. Imagine a water bottle, right? Just water bottle company. How is it that, that, that certain water bottles like Fiji water and stuff like that are very successful and then there's other water bottles that aren't successful, even though they're selling frigging bottled water that you can get for free? This is the same water that's been on this planet for billions and billions of years, yet they're bottling it up and just selling it back to us. First of all, that's absolutely crazy when you actually think about it because, you know, Earth's actually a closed system. We, we don't lose water. We, water actually is, 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 is a closed system, guys. It was around for billions of years. So it's the same weak offer, the same niche as well, selling waters to humans. It's the same niche, it's the same product, it's the same thing, it's, it's water, is what I'm trying to say. Here's how you do that. There's different water out there. I'm, I'm not even joking. There's literally a brand that sells water for 100K. If you've watched, um, what's his name? Two Chains, that's it, Two Chains. Two Chains has like a, a series where he does like the most expensive -ish shit. I'm sure there's literally a water bottle company that sells water for like 100K. I am not even joking. How is it that they're able to do that? Well, first of all, they've built a brand. So if you are going to be lazy and you're just gonna, you know, you're not gonna do any differentiation, you're gonna run with a weak offer and you're just gonna go in the same, same niche as everybody else, then the only way I can see that working is if you build a brand and probably run ads to that or get organic traffic. That's the only way I can see that. If, if, if not, it's not gonna work, guys, honestly. Like, un unless you do mass marketing. And when I say mass marketing, you're sending like a, a thousand emails a day or something stupid like that. 500 to a thousand emails a day or something crazy like that. That's what you call mass. You're just gonna force it and throw it down people's throats. I guess that could work, but that's a lot of wasted energy, a lot of inefficiencies is what I'm trying to say. Another reason why you guys are not closing clients with your cold outreach is because you're focusing too much on features, AKA you're telling people that you do Facebook ads. People don't care if you do Facebook ads. They've heard this over and over and over and over and over again. What they actually want is the outcome of Facebook ads. AKA, if for example, I get pitched a lot right now, which I don't mind getting pitched, short form content. I personally don't want short form content. I don't want short form content. I know it sounds like I want short form content, but it's the thing that short form content's gonna do for my brand. AKA, I can help you grow a brand 
your personal brand, so you can get inbound leads for your coaching business or your consulting business or your consulting agency, whatever business that you, you're actually targeting, guys. It's the outcome you're selling. It's not actually the, the, the it's not the short form content. I don't care about short form content. It's what the short form content can do for my business, AKA it gets me inbound leads organically. Inbound leads, that's, that, that, that's basically what I mean by you're selling the features and not the outcome. Number five is that you talk about yourself too much. You know, at my agency, we do this thing and that thing. No one cares about your, your agency. Like just forget the words Facebook ads, forget the words TikTok or anything to do with your actual service and just talk about the outcome instead. That already will put you probably ahead of 99% of the people. And don't talk about yourselves. Talk about them and case and, and bringing case, real case studies. That's another thing. Instead of talking about yourself, show what you can do. Show what you can do. Instead of talking, don't talk, show. Don't talk the talk, walk the walk is what I'm trying to say on that and unrealistic expectations. This is the number one reason why I genuinely think that most people just fail when it comes to outreach. They have this unrealistic expectation that they can, that they think, and I know I just recently made a video on how you can go to zero to 10K per month in like 24 days. I know that you've probably seen that on my channel recently, but it is, it is technically possible. In the video though, if you've watched that video, you will stress that if you wanna do it in 24 days, you're gonna to have to sacrifice everything. Sacrifice, you're just gonna to have to sacrifice everything. You're gonna to have to spend a lot of money on, on systems and you're gonna to have to delegate and work like a friggin' workhorse. So the number one kind of like thing that I've put here, number one is the unrealistic expectation. Let me actually break down some numbers for you guys when it comes to outreach. I've got a sheet on the board right here. I'm just gonna zoom in for you guys that are on mobile and stuff like that. If you're on mobile, definitely drop a like now. I just helped you guys out. But long story short, here's goals reverse engineering. So let's say we take today's date, right? And I've built this out for people inside of age fermentation. The link is below if you wanna enroll in that. But you guys, I'm just gonna show you guys just so you can get a picture. Let's say your goal is to get to 10, that infamous 10K, that sweet ass, 10K per month, you know, mark with your agency. Today's date, right, is the 10th of February. So you throw in today's date, there you go. Now we've got the goal of, of you know, if we change this to 12,000 and the numbers update, obviously. Oh wait, I'm just gonna change that back just real quick. And let's say we wanna do this in six months. I feel like that's a very realistic time frame if you're a beginner and you don't really have that much budget. If you've got more budget, then you can do, listen, this is the thing I, I've noticed with SMA as well. If you've got a bigger budget, you can do things much quicker because you've got these dollar things. You've got these things called dollars. If you don't have much budget, then it's gonna be much slower. I, this, this is the dichotomy I've come across now. It's like, if you've got money, use it because it will save you time. If you don't have money, then you're gonna have to spend a lot of time. You can either use what you call your financial resources or sweat equity. Those are the only two options you've got when you start an agency. You can either go the long way, which is for free. You don't want to invest. You don't want to buy nothing. You don't want to invest into your own education or even get like virtual assistance. Then you're going to do it all by yourself. And it's going to be a long drawn out process. I did this. It took me 16 months to land my first client. It sucked. I, I don't know why I was so freaking stupid. If I could have got to 10K per month in a single month, I freaking would have paid like, if I had the money, obviously, like 5, 10, 15, 20, 100K for that. Like, think about it. If I can get to 10K per month in a single month, how much would you actually pay for that? That's actually nuts. Anywho, if you don't have money, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to use your time. If you do have money, then you can have, you can obviously use money so you can save time. And time's obviously more important than money. So long story short, let's say it's the 10th of February. We've got six months to get to 10K per month, right? And the goal is we're gonna actually be closing clients. And again, if you put a different figure in here, obviously it, it starts updating as, as uh, you know based upon how many clients you need. But let's say you're charging two thousand dollars for your service, right? Don't know what the service is. This is not, we're not think, thinking about that right now. I'm just explaining the metrics behind this and why your expectations are unrealistic. If you think you can close a client every 100 messages or every 100 emails, you are far from gone, like far from gone. So let me break this down real quick. So each client, $2,000 you're, you're charging, that's revenue. You're then out of that $2,000, you're outsourcing for like maybe $500 or whatever it is, maybe $400, for example. We'll just put $500 in here to keep it nice and simple. So that means you're gonna, the net profit you're gonna make per one client is 1,500. So basically what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna, your profit goal is gonna end up being, well, if you get to seven clients, you're going to make around 10,000, you know, rough, rough, rough average, you're gonna be at 10,000 10, USD net profit. And as you can see that this shows you how many clients you need. So for example, if we're charging 5,000 per client, then obviously you're only gonna need two clients. There you go. It's a little bit over two clients, but you get, you get the point I'm trying to make. So we're just gonna change that back. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to cold outreach, kind of like the, the system here. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. What we've got is we've got the, the, the metrics over here. We've got the actual time that it's gonna take you to, to, to 
do the actions that you need, and I'm gonna show you the cost metrics as well. So again, we're just gonna throw the date in here, which is the set, which is the 10th. We need seven clients in 129 business days. We got this from here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that we're working only Mondays to Fridays. Mondays to Fridays, that's all we're doing. We're not gonna do Saturdays and Sundays. So you've got week, week, and that's how many weeks this is, how many total working days, excuse me, this is actually total business working days, this is how many total days left. This is how many weekend days there are. So if you do wanna work on Saturdays, just divide this number by two and then add it onto this number here. There you go, that's how you would do that. Anywho, seven clients in 121 business days. That basically means we need to do 105 emails at least per day, every single day. And let me show you exactly why these numbers are genuinely realistic. So what we've got here is cold outreach open rate. So let's say you send a hundred emails. How, what, what's the number of opens you're actually getting? I think you should be aiming for at least 65%. If it's lower, let's say your numbers just so happen to be lower, like let's say 60%, then obviously it's going to have an effect on all of these metrics down here. And the best thing about this is that you can see Based on your performance and how you're performing, you'll see that the costs change, everything changes because if, if you change one metric, it has a knock-on effect to all the other metrics. Most people don't operate like this though. They just blindly send cold emails, they don't track anything, they don't have metrics, they don't have anything like this. And the reason for that is because they, they, they just, they've just heard it online. They just, like, you just go to YouTube, they type into S, like, how to make money online, they come across all these same business models, then they eventually probably go down the dropshipping route, they then say, you know, dropshipping is too hard. They move into SMA and they think this is some get rich quick. It's not get rich quick. You can't just grab Facebook ads and a niche and slam it together and think it's gonna work and then send out stupid outreach messages. It doesn't work like that. I wish it did, but it honestly doesn't. It's getting, it's only gonna get more and more and more difficult, which is actually a good thing, by the way, because then a lot of like, bottom feed is gonna are kind of gonna like drop off as well it's, it's, there's, there's always booms and cycles to everything my, my guys so don't even worry about that so long story short let's say your open your, your open rate is three percent excuse me reply rate this is your reply rate a, re a good reply rate is anywhere between like three to maybe seven eight percent if you're getting anything above above eight percent you're absolutely killing it scale that campaign by the way if you're getting anything above eight 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 percent like back in the day i remember like maybe in 2020 maybe 2021 you could get kind of like eight percent reply rates and these are like positive replies, by the way. Oh, wait, yeah, no, yeah, these are positive, positive replies. No, they're just replies in general, excuse me. Because the next metric is how many of those replies then turn on to actual sales calls. So let's say you send 100 emails, no, 1,000 emails, 65% of those get opened. Out of, out of the ones that get opened, 3% of those people reply to you. Out of the people that reply to you, 25% of them are actually, you know, open to jumping on a call. But just because somebody says that they wanna jump on a call doesn't mean they're actually gonna show up. So this is where your show break comes into, in, comes into play, which most people, again, don't factor in. This is like a funnel, there's steps to this. Subject line gets your open rate. Your copy gets your reply rate. Your then follow up kind of like system gets you onto the actual call itself, which is this, this right here. And then just because somebody books in a call with you, let's say you get 100 people to, to agree to have a call with you. That doesn't mean all 100 people are gonna actually jump on a call with you. You will have no-shows. That is that is completely normal, by the way. And out of the no-shows, people that actually jump on a call, not everybody's gonna take you up on your offer, which everybody knows that. And that's where your close rate comes into it. So these are very, very, very solid numbers to work with, to be honest with you. Even if your numbers are worse than this, then just factor that in. Stop having these unrealistic expectation guys. And as you can see, we can see the amount of outreach we need to do if we add on a 20% margin of error. Everybody gets this wrong and everybody over over overstates themselves. Everybody, everybody over, over overestimates how good they are at cold outreach. So I always add in a 20% margin of error. It says that we need to do a minimum of 11,262 outreach to get these seven clients, but we're gonna add on a 20% margin of error. So now we need to do 13,514 outreach in 121 days, which sounds like a lot, but realistically it only comes out to 105 outreach a day. And if you think 105 outreach a day is a lot, you've got another thing coming for you guys. And the, and the reason why you probably think this is a lot is because you're probably trying to do it all yourself. You need lead sources, you need a virtual assistance, you need to you need to have a proper outreach team is what I'm trying to say. So what we can actually do is start breaking down now, how long does it actually, and by the way, these outreach messages, they're not all tailored, like what I mean by that, they're, they're personalized, but they're only personalized for the very first line. I call it first line writing. So you need a personalized first line is what I'm trying to say. Most, these days, I've now got a new system for personalizing first lines, 
that's so much quicker than the, 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 than the actual kind of like purse lines I was doing before. And they work just as effective. So it's a much quicker way. And again, it's not through AI, by the way. I don't use AI. We use actual proper handwritten first, first lines because it comes across authentic. People can tell when you're using some sort of AI. Sometimes the AI gets it all wonky and stuff like that. And it copies and, and pastes text that has like capitals in the wrong place and stuff like that. It's like cap, it's camel cased and stuff like that. It just looks awful is what I'm trying to say. You can tell straight away. But anyway, long story short, let's say it takes four minutes per message. If you do the maths, then it's gonna take you around 419 minutes per day, which is six hours, so just under seven hours of work per day, which is why, why I love this. Then what you can actually do is start working out, okay, cool. Well, I'm not gonna be able to work seven hours a day because I've got maybe, maybe you pretend you've got a nine to five job or whatever it is. Well, then you're gonna know, or should I say, you then now know that you need to hire virtual assistants. If you hire a virtual assistant, right, at three dollars per hour, what you can actually do is, is take this metric right here, which is three dollars per hour. You can take, take this metric right here and you can actually times it by three. If they're working seven hours, if let's say you hire one person and you're paying them three dollars per hour, three dollars per hour, you got three dollars, three dollars times six point, what is it, nine eight. It comes out to around $21, there you go. So as you can see, the F18, which is this, F18, as you can see, F18 times by three, which is three dollars, comes out to $21. And that's how much you're gonna be paying one person to do this. And here's the key we're not factoring in that we can actually hire two people so we're just going to actually half half the cost and this is how much you're going to, if you if you hire two virtual assistants if you hire one virtual assistant it's going to it's going to cost you this per month 419 dollars per month by the way if you split that into two so you're hiring two people which i do recommend by the way because if one if your first like if you hire one first line writer and they become ill you then have to go out stop your first of all you have to stop your outreach you then have to go and find another person to do outreach for you and there's a lot of you know, back and forth messing about. I'd rather you hire two different people just in case one person maybe becomes ill and you still got at least half your outreach being done that day. So you're not fully stuck not doing outreach is what I'm trying to say. So now you've got a total monthly cost of $419 and you're paying each one at $420 and you're paying each one $210 per month, which is very, very cool. The number of domains you can have is around, I'd, I'd say about three domains. You wanna be sending about three domains. Use a software, by, by the way, called Instantly. AI. I'll try to get you guys an affiliate link for this, but this will actually allow you to send like mass cold emails for like $97 real quick. It's like $97, but you can also have unlimited email accounts attached to it. Unlike Lemnis, Lemnis makes you add on and pay for additional seats. So let's say you've got a burner domain and another burner domain, you're trying to put them both on Lemnis, it will actually make you pay $59 for the first one and then like $49 for the second one per month. Whereas instantly.ai, you can have like 10 different domains on instantly.ai and it will still only charge you $97 per month, only, which is dope. So your total cost is coming out around $534. Now, if you start messing about with how long it's taking your first line writers to actually start doing, to, to do one line, then as you can see, the prices start increasing drastically. So you need to train your virtual assistants and your first line writers in the right way, is what I'm trying to say. But that's for a different story for another day. My training for my own virtual assistants are inside of each rotation. But as you can see guys, these are realistic numbers. 13,000 emails, who would have thought it was gonna take you 13,514 emails just to land seven clients at 2K each? I bet not one of you thought that guys. And that's the problem. You guys are not, you don't, got, you don't have realistic expectations, which is why this is my number one concern for people doing outreach. They think they can just do 100 emails, right? And that will pull out one, like maybe like, I don't know, one client from that. I think you can get one client from that. This is done, that's done. It's literally done. Even if it takes you, here's the funniest thing. Even if it takes you 2000 emails just to get one client, then, then so be it guys, so be it. Figure out a way to optimize this and aim for that number is what I'm trying to say. What else have you got to do? What else are you gonna do? Like, I don't know, work a nine to five job all your life? Like most of you watching this are gonna say like, fuck that. So what else are you gonna do? You're gonna have to figure out a way to go about doing this. Even if you have to work a nine to five job for now, so you can afford money, so you can actually set up your system, so you can afford the, this particular month, this cost right here for your actual, your email system. This is what you, I just call this your email system. Even if you have to work a friggin' nine to five job to afford this, or what you can actually do is, and this is what I teach inside of HR Rotation, which is why it's very, very friggin' powerful, 
I call it the hybrid system. I'm tired of mentioning this now, but basically the hybrid system is where you use a warmer traffic source like Upwork. You stack up social media management clients for like $600 per month, $600, my bad, not $6,000, $600 per month. Let's say you get three of these. Now you're making $1,800 per month from some social media management clients, right? Net profit, for example. Then what you can do is take this $1,800 that you're making from these social media management clients and afford this system quite comfortably. It's a self-financing way of doing this. This is why it's so genius. But that those, honestly guys, I feel like this is the secret to SMA. If you can just literally reset your expectations to, to, be, to be much higher, whatever number you think it is, just times it by five is what I've started to say to people. And then even then, just stick to it for ridiculous amounts of time and be consistent, guys. And if you do want help to bypass this, the cheat code for SMA, the cheat code, would be the hybrid system because it is a self-financing system that I'm yet to go through anyone's program to beat that. I mean, a lot of people teach you to go and get like virtual assistants and stuff like that now that I've started mentioning it and build an outreach team now that I started mentioning it. Like, you can look back at my channel. I've been, I've been talking about hiring virtual assistants to do outreach for you and have a VA, like a team of VAs before your favorite gurus even had their YouTube channels on, on, on YouTube. I am not even joking. You can look back and fact, fact check that, by the way. Then, now, a lot of people have actually stolen my idea, idea and started talking about appointment setters and getting virtual assistants and stuff like that. But the problem they're running into is that these VAs cost money. How, do you, how are you gonna afford that if you've got no cash flow? You need this cash flow. The way how we go about generating the cash flow is using Upwork first to stack up to that initial, maybe like 2K, it was actually 1.8K, from like three little miniatures, like you can call them doo doo clients or whatever you want to, and then you can go and hire your virtual assistants without even needing to take the money out of your own pocket because your Upwork clients are paying for these, which are your virtual assistants. Hopefully, you guys can understand that. Anyway, guys, hope you've been understand that. This is the cheat code, the secret to SMA to getting success. It's how I've done it. It's how I've been able to help students get from like zero to 10K, 10.6K actually, in like six months with a nine to five job, like literally you can go back on my channel and stuff like that and look at all the results. I just dropped a video. I might leave that below in the, in the description. But if you do want to enroll inside of Intramitation, just shortcut all of this. The link is below. Or if you want to work with me one-to-one, -one, I'll leave my candle link. We can book in a call, see if you're a good fit. If not, don't worry about it. You can go your separate ways. At least you're still going to learn something from that call. Anyway, guys, hope you're doing well. Don't forget to drop a like, comment, subscribe. Love you guys. Peace.